Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to Pods of the Multiverse Season 2. We are an unofficial D&D podcast. We play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Scala, and I will be portraying the world of Ravnica. And with me are my three dear friends who will be portraying the characters navigating that world. Hi, my name is Jeppy, and I play Illipel, the famed diplomat between the Boros Legion and the Gruul. Mm. I'm Jimmy. I play Clark, who is the boss of this outfit. Don't forget it. (laughs) (laughs) That almost, that almost works. Yeah, I think it it works more. Uh, (laughs) Oh, thoughts and prayers for Jimmy. He's doing great. (laughs) Um, We'll get there. And I'm Andy. I'm playing Alwyn, everybody's favorite, but all too suspicious druid. Yeah, chill out. Illipel definitely thinks you should be more trusting. You know, I've made my character choice and I'm sticking to it. Before we begin, I'd just like to remind everyone who's listening uh, that we're very grateful to have you here. And if you like listening to us, you can help us by uh, rating and reviewing us and just, you know, providing any sort of engagement that will you know help us rise in the algorithm we very much appreciate that and you know if you like us we'd like you to help us get our podcast out to more people so we very much appreciate that and without further business let's get into the episode okay so let's do a recap who remembers what happened last time we're probably gonna fight stuff oh no (laughs) oh i remember entirely what happened last time but i want to hear it from your perspective Oh, I see what we're doing. Uh, I was approached by a guy, Randy, <laughs> Richard. Fucking first name basis over here. <laughs> the, uh, I, uh, some person tried to swindle me for some money, kinda. You know, they basically had me, they had me tied up. And then I got on like a gargoyle thing with them and flew around the city. That was pretty cool. I recall that you did not uphold your end of a contract. Yeah, it's in progress. Also, I noticed how Jeppy just completely forgot his NPC's name. I remember mine. It was Vim the Vigorous. (laughs) Excuse me. Tomek. 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 I don't remember the gargoyle used to create. It's not a gargoyle, but whatever the creature was. No, it was a gargoyle. Ding, ding, ding. Points for you. All right. It was officially. Okay. I was hiding out at the Withered Petal, and I met Vim, and he had me look for a, a watch found it just a bit of business that i didn't remember to bring up last time was that locket during the short rest you would have attuned to that cool that's a golgari locket you can wind it once a day and when you do you gain a single spell slot that can be used to cast either ray of sickness or entangle either of the golgari spells nice they told me any work outside of the undercity is good enough for me and then we had to go solve this mystery about the Sun Disc, who was, uh, which was guarded by Vinnick, Zepp, and Martin, who all report to Zoltan. Wow. More points for Jeppy. Okay. Uh, we did that. We talked around for a little while. We did some, you know, assessment of the area. And then, oh, God, where did we end up? We ended up going, I can't remember the name of the area, but it's the north east side the rubble belt the rubble belt thing and then um I, you know i killed it with uh, mitigating some potential disaster with some you talked a lot i talked a lot <laughs> yeah. alan didn't alan didn't really care for it and uh we avoided conflict i think so far so far but that's probably gonna be short-lived and then we talked with the people who were guarding it and now we're yeah we're that's more or less everything i guess I don't know. <laughs> All right. So Martin is uh, involved with the name of the guild, which is Boros. The Boros Legion. Oh, but he's kind of now involved with the face paint. Yeah. So he's with this irregular company, right? They're sort of a mixed unit of Gruul, tribes people, and Boros Legionnaires. And a lot of them fought together during the battle, yes. so they've kind of formed this bond. And you're traveling with them now. They're gonna try and stop what they believe to be this sort of shakedown. This guy can't, you know, pay their loans on their business, 
and so they're going to try and stop the deck collectors from collecting this person's deck. And I wonder whose faction they will be for. I don't know. You are traveling with Zytha and her irregular company, and as you're on this march through the dismal cold, she does turn to you, one or all of you. So you said you're with the Guild Pact. Gotta wonder, what's that old dragon got a coil monkey, a sludge sifter, and a, a fop, I guess? Looking for all the way out here. A what monkey? <laughs> You know, coil monkeys. You got some some grease on your face. You look like you've been down in the works. Well, yeah, I guess so. I don't think she meant any harm, Glork. I, I didn't mean an offense. Yeah, that's what they all say. We're looking for answers. Oh, yeah, that's specific. <laughs> <laughs> look, if, if it's none of my business, it's none of my business. I've been there before. But I do appreciate you helping us out. I think I know just the job to set you on. I look about, and then I look back to her, and I say, Well, son disc, that's what we're looking for. That wouldn't mean anything to you or yours, would it? Let me think. Ah, it doesn't ring a bell. Very well. She snorts. Her helmet jangles over her horns. So you march for a short while with this company. You eventually reach a gently sloping ridge, and below you, at the bottom of this ridge, you notice that the landscape of... The demolished buildings of the 4th Precinct gives way to the same sort of residential neighborhood that may have once stood behind you. There are small houses of rustic construction about two or three stories high, and where the street comes to a corner, Zytha points out a building with a sort of wooden sign hanging over it. Carved into it is the, like, symbol of a bubbling vial. That's Kennan's there. The transport should be pulling up about a block away. And she points to an intersection to the south. We'll set up our ambush there. About how many people are with us? Ten, a dozen. Okay. Now, there's more than likely to be some sort of priest with them. They'll go into the shop alone to perform the rite of repossession. When that happens, we'll move. But I need a small team to keep the priest occupied while we raid the transport and liberate anything or anyone inside. My new friends, do you think you can do that? I just look towards Illipel with kind of a blank stare. I presume by small team you refer to, hmm, say, three individuals ought to do it? Yes, my new friends. That is why I asked you. Very well. Illipel, what is it you said that you did before being hired by the Guild Pact? We brought people together, <laughs> cultivated memorable experiences, and all manner of inspiration. Oh, so you're a pimp? What? <laughs> Gotta give me a second to tackle that one. Quick point of order. Sex work is legal on Ravnica. There is like some, you know, permitting and verification process ordained by the Senate, but it wouldn't be like a necessarily criminal profession to be in the flesh trade. Sure. I think you may be mistaken. I am a purveyor of experiences. The acronym would be POE or PO. Not pimp, as you've described it. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it is extremely stupid. Um, very New Age marketing. Very Orzhov. I love it. <laughs> I just kind of shrug all of that off and just go, so then you would honestly say that you wouldn't know what sort of rituals this person would come and perform? Zytha, this ritual cannot occur as far as you are concerned. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Alwyn, my expertise on the specific ritual is that it simply cannot occur. <laughs> I just fucking roll my eyes and scoff. <laughs> Jesus. Illipel might actually know something about this if you want to roll. Uh, history seems fine. Okay. Dirty 20. Oh, yeah. So this happens quite frequently. You've never had to do it personally. That's not really your branch it's something that the priests tend to do themselves but it is a ceremony by which either possessions or blood or the promise of a soul which is now illegal is taken as payment for a debt that is overdue okay alwyn while i do have a particular knowledge of 
The mingling of human bodies, my knowledge falls short where spirits are concerned, and the best to my knowledge, this ritual involves some sort of melding of spirit or blood. Dark arts that I'm afraid I simply could not find tenable at my establishment. I don't know if I believe them. You can roll insight. That is going to be a 24. So I wasn't lying. <laughs> I don't know what to do in this case. All right. Okay. I just kind of give an unchanging stoic glare. I'm playing a very untrusting <laughs> character. <laughs> and I'm playing the least trustworthy. And you're playing a very untrustworthy <laughs> character. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah, there's a corner store, corner drug store, sort of down the hill from you. You know, at some point in the near future, a priest is going to come and try and repossess it or something. And you have an unknown amount of time to make your plans. I'm going to cast Mage Armor. Cool. My AC is now 15. Any flourish you'd like to add to that? I suppose it, it has somewhat of an electric quality to it. It's related to what I'm wearing. Are you expecting others besides this priest to show up? Zytha will say, we should be able to handle the rest of them. The transport will usually have an escort of guards, but the right is not to be tarnished by people of lower caste, if I understand correctly. Well, I'm looking at Clark here, who's armoring up. I could do something similar, but if the three of us walk in ready to fight, and I think we've cut the situation down a bit, don't you? You're looking for time. I think Illipel should go in and we should stay behind until they've worn their tongue. Well, we're dealing with a priest, and ill tidings and devious rituals aside, I think most can be reasoned with. I'm happy to do a little shopping on my own. Are there windows on this building? Yeah, there's the large front window with racks of things on display. Okay, cool. Let me ask this then. Zytha knows this person, right? Yes. Uh, she knows Kenan. Would we be able to hide? either inside or nearby. There will be no need for that. I will be able to send you a message if the time comes. Zytha will acknowledge you, Illipel, but still answer Alwyn's question. I imagine a clever person could find a way to hide in there or just try and look like a normal customer if they were looking to get the drop. All right. Shall we do a little shopping then? Sure. All right. And Zytha, do you have any sort of... Signal or call should things turn on your end. She rattles her helmet again. <sniffs> we won't need it. Famous last words. Uh, just talking back to Illipel on that. <laughs> I've been in an ambush or two down in the Undercity. It's not pretty. A story for another time. One no doubt that I would love to hear. Content that you have a plan, Zytha marches the rest of her band down the block to the south... I presume you guys head down the hill and into the corner store. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's go in the store. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. You go into the corner store. All right. What's in there? What can we buy? What do we got? What do we got? There's various racks of potions and herbs and things of that nature, but there's also like dry goods, canned vegetables, bags of flour and sugar mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Got Very it. much like your bodega type place. Is the guy there? Is there somebody in there? Yeah, you see at the counter there's a youngish looking elf. They're wearing a druggist's coat over a simple tunic and pants. They adjust their spectacles as you come in. Uh, oh, oh, I, I don't suppose you're planning on buying 400 Zeno's worth of merchandise today? How much is that in gold? 400 gold pieces. Okay, great. <clears throat> Can't say we are, friend. How much is the coffee? Coffee? Um, let's see... That's what a coffee costs. This is one of the things that's actually in the book. So oh, I want to get it right. That's right. <laughs> uh, ten zips. Ten zips uh, for a coffee. Or I can give you like a bag of coffee beans if you'd like. And that'd be one Zeno for that. And that'll last you a couple weeks. Eh, I left my coffee maker at home. I'll just take a cup of coffee then. You young individuals sound like you are in desperate need of... 400 zips. Was it zip? What's the, what's the highest? Zenos. Zenos, chief. Zenos is the gold piece. Zib is the copper piece. You young individual. This is a younger person, right? You said that? Young for an elf, right? They could be anywhere between 150 and 400. That's enough for Illipel to call them young. <laughs> yep, you're right. <laughs> you young individual are apparently in need of 400 Zenos. Is that correct? Yes. Well, 
a word of advice. I think you're going about this all wrong. You see, you have the potions here up on display first, but think about your common customer. Potions are nebulous, misunderstood, alchemical in nature. Very hard to understand. Right. Next to it, herbs. Herbs are an ingredient of said potions. Herbalism, not oft practiced. You're advertising the wrong items. You need to bring these canned goods, something the simple folk understand better. Who doesn't understand potions? Potions are easy to understand. <laughs> and what did you do yesterday morning at work, Clark? Yesterday morning? Oh, you know, I was just in the Undercity like I do, mending the uh, hydromagnetic generators. <laughs> and, uh, and, and as I said, to it. It is easy to understand for someone of your astute intellect. Who, me? Yes, you. But we are in a different world here. My young friend, pointing back to the shopkeep, this advice to you for free. Do you mind if we continue to browse around and take no offense if we do not purchase anything today? Um, no, but just be aware. I've heard the bells ringing. I think someone is coming. Ah, well. Then my advice to you may not be the only gift you are given today. I speak up from across the room. We're with Scyther. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. Is there anything I can do to help you? I'm not much in a fight, but... If one breaks out, find someplace safe. That was my plan, my friend. That and the coffee. Ah, yes, of course. I can hear it bubbling now. They go to their coffee pot. I'll pour you a cup of coffee. Clark reaches up with his two little tiny goblin hands and takes this big cup of coffee. It might behoove you to hide some of your more valuable items, just in case things get a little rowdy in your establishment. Uh, yes, good idea. And they begin taking down some of the potion bottles, putting them in like a crate and bringing them into the back. If you have a healing potion or two, it could be of use. Roll persuasion on this. They're grateful, but they are still in debt. Right. I'm going to say you can roll this with advantage because you have said you're from Zytha. They know you're here to help. 14, not 20 in the second. For a total of 20. <laughs> <laughs> they look at you. They sort of adjust their spectacles again. If we don't use it, I'll give it back. You all are sparing me a great deal of trouble, one hopes. And they hand you a potion. This will be a standard one if you have to roll it. Great. And they take the rest of the crate and head off into the back. Anything else you guys are doing to prepare before perhaps something happens? Clark has already finished the large coffee and he's kind of vibrating. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> That's awesome. Illipel will continue to kind of look like they're interested in making purchases, checking out items, that kind of thing. Trying to look like a normal customer. Normal okay. customer. I want to try and hide, but not necessarily like get under a table. There's probably like some racks sort of in the back that you could probably hide behind. Yeah, some like shelves or something. I could just say that I was I was like browsing behind. Totally. You could hide behind there. Okay, here we go. Okay, that is going to be a 17. 17 for Alan? Can I also say, I don't know how long of a conversation there's going to be here, but if we're assuming that it's going to go into some sort of fight, can I have... um. If you want to turn your spore aura on, I'm going to say it's, it would make your location a little obvious. Then can I at least shillelagh one of my weapons? Absolutely. I kind of begin casting this cloud of spores, and growth and vines begin forming on my mallet, but I have it hidden under my cloak. Illipel, why don't you roll me a deception check to look like you're supposed to be here? My deception check, 19. 19 for Illipel. All right. And Clark, are you attempting to hide or appear inconspicuous in any way? Clark kind of looks like he does belong here. He uh, was just in the neighborhood this morning. <laughs> True enough. Roll me deception, and I'll say you can make that with advantage. Sure. 19. Very nice. You guys are going to be difficult to anticipate. So after getting yourself situated... You do note that the doors swing open. A woman in a long black robe with a long white shawl draped over her shoulders walks into the corner store. Around her neck hangs a thick chain strung with five platinum coins and a flail is hanging on her waist and a cruel-looking gargoyle follows behind her. Uh-oh. Great. As she steps into the store and she begins intoning... In nomine aurum et argentum et divities sanctum. Amen. 
Amen, indeed. Those are gorgeous platinum discs. Platinum is the most refined of metals, in my opinion. This woman looks at you. My friend, I am here on most regrettable, most sacred business. This establishment has defaulted upon its debts, and I have come to enact the right of repossession. This is so fucking Catholic, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) And no small wonder. Look at the way they have this place set up. I would have turned this around in an instant. You can bet on that. Now, I'm curious. I'm a business owner myself and have never seen such rituals performed. How does it work, and how do you collect a debt in such a way? And uh, no, No matter, actually. I'm disinterested in that already. Yes, pray that you may never sink so low as a debtor, my friend, for debt is the most vile of sins. I think it's less about sin and more about leverage, and I'm sure you'd feel the same way, correct? The soul of a debtor is forever stained. They have not fulfilled their obligations to their fellow sentient beings. Ah, but you forget that shred of hope in every debtor. Desperation. They reek of it. And when they are desperate, you can get them to do anything. Much more appealing, would you say? Indeed. They will part with their belongings. And if they will not part with their belongings, they will part with their souls or their blood. (sighs) They once could be parted from their souls, but I must perform this sacred rite. The debt is due. You would not impede me, my friend? It's less about impeding you and learning how I might be of service. I came here as a curious customer, most disappointed in the way this person has set up shop. It's a strange passion, habit of mine, to visit locations and understand their true potential. I'm sure you can relate to such an endeavor. Which is why I wonder, is this debt due with expediency? She's going to roll a vibe check on you. I'm going to use your 19 from before if that's (laughs) acceptable. (laughs) Oh, dear. What uh, what number starting with two did she get? (laughs) She is a cleric. Wisdom is her primary stat. She still needed a 15 or higher. And she rolled a 16. Okay. Let's all roll initiative. And then I'll explain how things are going to happen. 11. Got an 18 over here. 9. Scala, this is our first combat with a lot of people. Yes. Not saying this for any reason, but don't forget me in the initiative. (laughs) Jeffy, why would you ever say that? (laughs) I don't know. It's almost like once upon a time I would get forgotten in the initiative like a couple times. Almost every every (laughs) battle. Almost every encounter. Okay, so... Elwyn, you are going first, and you get to act in the surprise round. Okay. I can tell that she's on to Illabel. She's on to this thing. The way she sort of posed the question Great. to Illabel, are you trying to delay this sacred rite? She thinks something's up. Wonderful. She rolled high on her insight check, so she's on to Illabel and Clork, but she rolled terribly on her perception check, so she's not on to you. Okay, excellent. Can you please tell me where she is in relationship to the gargoyle and Illipel. Illipel, how close were you to her when you interrupted her? I walked up to her and made note of the platinum. Okay, so you're like within a five foot square of her. Yeah, like absolutely ready. Like if it goes to combat, we're close quarters. All right, and similarly, the gargoyle is standing directly behind her. I'm going to keep this simple. I am going to bonus action shillelagh my second weapon, my quarterstaff. Okay. Come out of hiding and attack her. I'm going to attack her. Okay, cool. Would I be able to get advantage from Illipel in any way? You have advantage because she's surprised. Okay. 19 to hit. That will most definitely hit. So, with the mallet, which has this aura of dark and dull greens trailing behind it in a tight cloud. I swing and I hit for 12 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Oh! Blasted ruffian! That was the surprise round. You're up again. Oh, shit. Okay, great. Um, so then now I'm going to invoke my symbiotic entity. You see these gnarled thorns and brambles almost spike-like, come up out of my cloak, around my shoulders and my neck. All of the growth that is growing through my hair becomes more extreme and exaggerated. My eyes sort of flare green as I 
use my spore entity and take on this form using wild shape. So that was an action. And then I'm going to just say, there won't be any debt collecting today. Very nice. You have just come up and menaced the charge of this gargoyle, so it is going to attack you, its most prominent target. Okay. So it's going to make a bite at you, but it's a 20 hit. 20 definitely hits. Okay, so you take seven points of piercing damage. Cool, cool, cool. And then it swings its claw. Oh my word, that's another 20. Okay. The claw will hit you for three damage. Okay. Clark, you're up. So Clark has been kind of milling around this shop, looking at things, trying not to look at the situation that's unfolding. Doesn't anyone work in this place? Can I get some service here? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as Alwyn initiates this combat, Clark is going to hurl a chaos bolt at our new enemy here. So are you targeting the priest with this? Are there other options? There's the gargoyle. Oh, yes, right. I am going to target the priest. Oof, that's a crit fail. Oh, I'm so sorry. Your chaos bolt indeed behaves chaotically. You go to aim it. It ricochets directly behind you, not at all where you were aiming. And now it is Alona's turn if you wanted to use that reaction. Yeah, so at the start of her turn, I will go ahead and use this halo of spores. You see me slam the end of my quarterstaff on the ground, and these small thorns spring up from the ground, right below where she's standing, and I need her to make a constitution save throw. On save, very good. She only got a seven on that. Okay, that's going to fail, and so, you know, the d4s here. Okay, she takes seven necrotic damage. Very nice. She does take that, and now she's a little upset. You hurt her pretty good, so she's going to try and hit you with a spell. Go for it. Ooh, yeah, an 11's not going to do it, is it? No. Okay, you see her charge up this foul necromantic energy in her hand. She reaches out and you can feel your blood drawn to this touch, but she misses and you do not get your life drained at all. Oh, cool. Your guild aren't the only ones who know death magic. Illipa, you're up. I will go ahead and we'll do some dissonant whispers on the gargoyle. Okay, cool. That is a wisdom save? Yeah, that's going to be a four. Nice. Passes. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. So Illipel will whisper a message to the gargoyle. You know, you've done nothing but follow, follow, follow. And now look where you've ended up. In a trap, unable to get away from something that you know will be your undoing. As it takes 14 psychic damage and has to use its reaction to move away. Yup, it does that. Hell yeah, hell yeah. It moves away, it moves right on out the door, back onto the street. Uh-oh, I don't like that. Alwyn, you're up. Great. Before I attack, can I just like look out the door and see how far away the rest of the crew are? Like, is this gargoyle going to start to go after them now? Just from a glance, doesn't look like. Okay, great. Then in that case, I'm going to keep swinging. Okay. I'm going to swing twice. That's probably going to miss. That's only a 12. Indeed it will. Okay, mallet misses. And this is the quarterstaff. That's only a 13. Ah, no dice, I'm afraid. Wow, that sucks. Alwyn swings, but your weapons sort of dink off of perhaps some chain links under this ceremonial garment. Bad rolls. That was a six and a seven. That sucks. The gargoyle is going to come back into the room. Of course he is. Just the claw and the bite. Sure. The claw is going to be an eight. I believe that won't hit. That doesn't hit. My AC is not great, but that is and a nat one for a five. Holy so shit. Okay. We're having a bit of a whiff fest over here. It's a whiff festival. Yeah. Whiff round. An entire round of just whiffing. Clark, we're back to you. I had an audio issue a minute ago. Has nothing changed since my last turn? In effect. <laughs> well, uh, no, the gargoyle got hurt. <laughs> and, he, and he walked away for a little bit. He left and then came back. Gargoyle walked away and then came back. <laughs> yeah. Walked away and then yeah. came back, and that was the only material change to the situation. Clark, what would you like to do? I'm going to convert my sorcery points into a 
first level spell slot. I'm going to try again to throw a Chaos Bolt, but this time at the Gargoyle. Okay. Here we go. It's a two this time. Oh, Jeez. no. It's not a crit fail, but it's only a seven. An entire round of whiffs. Clork raises up his wrench, which starts to kind of crackle with chaotic energy, and it warbles and... And then he kind of whips a Chaos Bolt in completely the wrong direction, and it knocks over a shock display. Oh, oh dear. Now I have even more money to make up. <laughs> it's now the priest's turn. Yep. The priest sees that she's somewhat surrounded. I've got plenty of hit points left. She's going to cast a different spell this time. You who would disrupt this sacred rite, be forever cast into darkness. And I'd like both you, Alwyn, and you, Illipel, to make me a constitution saving throw as she casts blindness at third level, targeting oh, both of you. Okay. Wow. 18. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool. That's a 13. Okay. Illipel, you see the sacred light of the black sun of Orzhov begin to blind your eyes, but you are able to blink it out. You're familiar with this sort of thing. Alwyn, no such luck as you are unable to see. Cool. And that was her turn. Illipel, we're back to you. All right. Illipel will begin to draw their sword. I should have done this sooner, my friend. But now that I have this, I hope that it's an inspiration to you. And as my bonus action, I will cast Bardic Inspiration on Alwyn. Ooh. And then I will just, I'm just going to bop her with my uh, rapier. Do roll your attack All with right. your rapier. <laughs> All right. Dirty 20. You lunge at her. You believe you will strike true, but using its reaction, the gargoyle steps in front and intercepts the blow. Oh. Uh, just roll your damage against the gargoyle. Six piercing damage. Okay, very good. Your weapon, it sort of grazes this granite skin of this creature. You feel like it may not be as effective against this material as it would against flesh. That brings us back to the top of the order. Alwyn, you're up. Cool. I grew up in the dark. I've never feared it. And I slam my mallet down on the ground and cast Earth Tremor. And I need the gargoyle and the priest to please make dexterity saving throws. All right. What about me? It's an emanation centered on you. I'm going to say Illipel is within 10 feet of you. Okay. You're also blind. I feel like it's fair. <laughs> Just across the board. <laughs> All right. Everybody's making dex saves. Yep. Dexterity saving. Ilona nat won that. Hell yeah. The gargoyle got a 14. Uh, Ty goes. Ty goes to the saver. Okay. Okay. Illipel got a fifteen. Okay. Illipel saves as well. So bummer. All that happens is you see I slam my mallet on the ground and more thorns spike up and disrupt the earth, and the priest gets knocked prone and takes six bludgeoning damage. Very good. Uh, on a success, you take no damage. Okay. She's on the ground. She's taken some damage. Oh, and she needs to make a concentration check on the blindness. Oh, awesome. She did succeed on her concentration check. Cool. Uh, so at the end of your turn, you still get to make another save, I believe. Okay, so that was my action, and I've already kind of upped all my bonus actions, so I'm just going to go ahead and make that save again. Very good. That's going to be a 16. You are able to blink away this foul, dark sunlight from your eyes. Okay, nice. And you can see again, just in time for the gargoyle standing between Uh you and Illipel to take a swing. I think it's going to bite you and claw Illipel. The bite going in you, uh, 22 hits. Yep. Uh, You take seven points of piercing damage. Cool. Illipel... Uh, 23 hit you? Yeah, probably. For three points of slashing damage. And we are now at Clark. Enough messing around. I'm going to run up and just pounce on the priest yes. with a shotgun <laughs> grasp. Yeah. <laughs> and this is with advantage, right? Because she's prone? Yeah, she's prone. This is a melee attack. That's a 23 to hit. Too high, I'm afraid. There we oh, go. no. Okay. That's three lightning damage. Okay, she takes the three lightning damage, and now it's her turn. I'm going to disengage as a bonus action. Very cool. Just move move away. Hell yeah, that goblin kid. Lovely hit-and-run tactics from our friend Clark here. Why, you foul little creature! She uses half her movement to stand. At the beginning of her turn, I'm gonna spores her. 
Forzer, yep. she makes a con save. Nice con save. What is your DC? 14. She got a 14, exactly. I'm afraid. Okay, and I believe saves on this. Negate. Uh, yep, bummer. Okay. Clark, you just zapped her. She is going to waggle her fingers, and in the air above your head will materialize this flail, similar to the one at her side. It appears to be made of sunlight and dripping gold. That's a pretty cool spiritual weapon. And it winds up and tries to thwack your little goblin head. Oh, God, these attack rolls. A 22 hits, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. Clark, you take 10 points of force damage as this oh, no. this golden mace conks you on the head. <laughs> Youch. Illipel, we're back to you. Can we see that Clark is incredibly hurt by that one attack? I, I'm not going to make you roll medicine. That looked painful. Yeah, I'll use my bonus action. I think it's time for you to calm down just a bit. But first, feel better. And I will cast Healing Word as my bonus action on Clark. This is eight healing. Ah, nice. So much for that base. Feels almost good as new. Thanks for the healing, bud. And then with my actual turn, I'm going to cast sleep. Okay. Oh, nice. 27 hit points worth of damage in the pool. So she has the lowest hit points. Yep. So it's going to start with her wisdom save, right? No, they're just asleep. Oh, there's no saving throw. Yeah. She's asleep for one minute unless she gets attacked. Wow. Yeah, it it just works. Holy shit. (laughs) Wow. You love to see it. Oh my god. All the DMs in the room just realized how good that spell is against low levels. Yes, time for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. How, how big is this room? It's like a drugstore. Probably at least 30 feet square, right? Probably okay. a little more. So I'm just... Is Clork more than 20 feet away from the center of this spell right now? Ah, oh, that is how that works. And how many hit points do you have, Alwyn? I saw 13. 13, and Clark, you have? 14. 14. Uh-oh. So it would go to Alwyn first. Before the priest? No, it goes to the priest first, okay. and then to Alwyn. Okay. Oh. So that was, there were 23 in the pool, right? 27. Oh. I'm asleep. Are there 13 left? There are. Oh, boy. <laughs> nine left. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, cool. Clark, you remain awake. But I'm asleep. But you're the, you're the only one. Wow. And it's the gargoyle's turn. Illabelle. I just fucking fall asleep. The gargoyle dutifully uses its action to nudge the priest awake. Oh, god damn it. Why wasn't the gargoyle affected? Uh, it has... It just isn't affected. It has more hit points left. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Fuck. Well, well that was his action. That was his action. He can't do anything else. Clark, back to you. You're wide awake. You're feeling great. Yeah, I am. I'm a fucking sleep. Oh my god. <laughs> I. <laughs> I should. I guess I should now use my action to wake up Alwyn. <laughs> do whatever you want. That would be a good tactical choice. I don't know if it's what Clark would do. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it is. Clark looks at the enemies in front of him. Looks to Alwyn sleeping on the floor, kind of weighs his options, and then subtly kind of kicks Alwyn awake, and then uses his bonus action to hide. Cool. (laughs) Go ahead and roll me stealth. 13. Okay. That was Clark. Okay. You're awake. I'm awake. (laughs) Ilona wakes up. Would spiritual weapon have gone away? No, spiritual weapon just lasts for the duration. Okay. It's a good spell. She's going to use half her movement to stand up, use her bonus action to send it at the person who just knocked her out. I'm guessing a nine doesn't hit you, Jeffy. Okay, it whiffs. She points a finger at you, Alwyn, on the floor. You undercity cretans, so proud, but your supposed strength of the earth will wither in the black sun. And she's going to make a spell attack against you. As this beam of black sunlight sort of shoots from her finger towards you. Not gonna be good. Does a 14 hit you? 14 is my AC. Okay. You are struck by this ray of enfeeblement. Cool. You feel weaker. You deal half damage on weapon attacks that use strength until the spell ends. It's a concentration spell. Okay. Oh, all right. So she enfeebles you. We are back to Illipel. 
did I get a turn in there? No, you were asleep for your turn. Oh. You hate to see it. All right, I'm going to attack her with my sword. Okay, very good. Okay, nice. I'm assuming it hits 17. 17 hits. Cool, cool. Six piercing damage. Yep, the gargoyle's going to do the old switcheroo again. Take that hit instead of her. Uh, though now she is standing between you and Alwyn. Just in time for Alwyn's turn. On the ground, I use my movement to stand up, and I, I am extremely hurt. <sighs> Strong words from someone who preys on the weak. And I'm going to cast Ice Knife on the gargoyle. Okay, cool. That's a nat 20. Well, hot damn! And then I need the gargoyle and the priest to make dexterity saving throws. As you see, I whip my quarterstaff and this large knife-shaped shard of ice streaks out and then explodes. This is cool. This is very cool. The gargoyle not won to that save, okay. but she got an 18. Okay, so that will pass. Um, so the gargoyle, Jesus, takes 15 piercing damage. Hot damn. And then an additional seven cold damage. And I believe according to this spell, she saved, so she doesn't take any damage. Okay, both of these adversaries looking very hurt. And now, I know this was a house roll for, for you know, any of my games, Theros or home games or otherwise, as far as using a potion yourself as a bonus action. You don't have to, to say that that's a thing, but I am just going to ask that. You've got some movement left, right? Uh, yeah, I, I just got it. Yeah, I'll say you've got enough action left to take it out and swig it. Thank you. I'm going to do that. Um, and I gained some health. Very good. And now I'm back in double digits. <laughs> Excellent. Gargoyle's turn now. It's going to take an attack against each of you. Bite to Alwyn. 22 hits. Yes, it does. For maximum damage of 8 points of piercing Ouch. damage. Ouch. Oy vey, oy vey. And claw for you, Illipel. Oh my god. Does an 18 hit? Yo, it hit. Four points of slashing damage. Yikes. We go now to Clork. All right. Can I draw my crossbow? So from sort of across the shop here, Clork is going to draw his crossbow and fire off a shot at the gargoyle. All right. That's a dirty 20. Uh, that will absolutely hit. Hell yeah. Okay. And that is eight piercing damage as Clark kind of pops out of cover and shoots off the cross. Yeah, it had no idea where you were. You catch it by surprise. Another chink in its granite form appears. <laughs> as a bonus action, I'm going to hide again. That's only a seven this time, though. They both look directly at you. <laughs> oh. My uh, ears are sticking out over a shop display. <laughs> Ilona, now on her last leg. Start of her turn, I'm going to spores her. Okay. She only rolled a two. And this is max damage. This is four necrotic damage. You can't do one more point of damage? I fucking wish. If I had been knocked to sleep. And she looks at you. And I, I'm almost certainly going down. Hey, the black sun strike you down. It can try 13 doesn't hit you, does it? Just misses. She pulls out her flail. You can see the foul black energy coalesce in the head. You think if this blow had connected, it would have been very painful. Yeah, I kind of cross my mallet with my quarterstaff and catch it with the two. You intercept the blow, and she is now at the mercy of perhaps Illipel. She also has a spiritual weapon up, not to much in that. She moved it over to Illipel because Illipel knocked her out. And I think it'll stay there. Does a 16 hit you? Yep. You take 11 points of force. I take 7 points and then pass the fuck out. Mm. Okay. Uh-oh. Illipel, make a death saving throw. I spent a long time since I've done this. Yeah, what, the whole one time we ever had it happen in Theros? Uh, I know it didn't happen to me in Theros, I don't think. No. <laughs> it was me. Yeah, the dragon Oh, 19 on the dice. All right. You're feeling good for now. Alwyn, we're over to you. <sighs> I see Illipel go down, but I also see that this priest is hanging on by a thread. And perhaps against 
my better judgment, I'm just going to swing at her. All right. And so first swing, that is only a 15. Her armor class is 16. I thought so. I thought it was. And so my second swing, that is going to be a 16. <laughs> you hit. <laughs> Thank fucking God. So she's at one. But I'm gonna roll it. Two. Okay, nice. That's 11 points of bludgeoning. And this is magical, correct? Yep. Okay. You would knock her to the ground with this blow, but the gargoyle once again uses its bodyguard reaction. It takes this hit. Okay. It takes 11 points of magical bludgeoning damage, and it crumbles into a pile of rocks on the ground. <sighs> one, one down. Clark. Okay. Clark is going to run up to this priest and use a shock and grasp. Excellent. Is anyone flanking me? Flanking with me? I guess you could stand over Illipel's unconscious body to get a flank. I don't... Does that work? They're unconscious. They can't object to you doing it. Well, that's... I don't like that. A little dubious. I don't love that either. So is this attack with advantage or not? Oh, she's wearing... She's wearing chain under her... Yeah, it's with advantage. That's great. Okay. So... That's a 23 to hit. Clark reaches out one spindly finger and just pokes her with electric shock. Would you like to add any more flourish to this final blow of the combat? Her entire body begins to writhe with electrical current as her armor conducts this little spark from Clark's finger. Indeed it does, and her electrocuted body collapses down to the ground. Before anyone else will get to act in initiative, Illipel, one more death saving throw from you. After that, I'm sure we can... 15 on the dice. Okay, that's two successes. No danger here. I'm sure we can get Illipel back up. I walk over to Illipel on the ground, and I cast Cure Wounds. Illipel, you heal for 10. Thank you very much, good friend. You did very well. Thank you. Clark is straddling your knee. I think we all did just as well as we needed to. Clark, are you hurt as well? Am I hurt? Nah, I'm fine. Very well. <laughs> Illipel says while looking around the desolated convenience store, this was rather scrappy, I would say, but I think the three of us have much room for improvement, and I for one am quite excited about what the future holds for us. Kenan, hearing the fighting stop, pokes their head out from the back room. And, oh, that sounded like quite the scrap out there. Don't worry about all the mess. It's, well, it's better than what would have happened to me had you not been here. Please pass my gratitude along to Zytha and my good masters. If you are ever in the neighborhood again, Kennens shall be happy to serve you at a sizable discount. All right. Well, I think we did some good work here. Let's go. <laughs> he just wrecked his fucking shot. Clark's proud of himself. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, Clark is going to use mending and fix one shelf nearest to him. <laughs> well done, Clark. Thank you. Again, I understand why there needed to be all this commotion, and you have my gratitude. Surely not 400 Zenos worth of damage, so I think you're at a net positive in this exchange. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> I just kind of look at Illipel like, seriously, dude. Your words are coarse, but they are not without truth. Thank you again. After walking away from the priest's body, I look back to Kenan and I say... You can keep the platinum. All right. All right. We're out of here. Yeah. Let's go. All right. You head back onto the street. You can see the block down where the other irregulars were fighting. There are some bodies on the ground of these gold armored enforcers. And you can see there's a large albino skinned pack beast mm. sort of slumped over on the ground, bleeding from many wounds. There are a number of long wooden caskets almost chained to its back. Illipel, you would know of these things. These great beasts are thralls, constructed undead creatures made from the unworthy flesh of debtors as punishment for their sins. This is what becomes of their bodies after they die. I just kind of look at the priest we just slew, as well as these bodies. May their souls not have to face the punishment that they were seeking to collect. It appears at the other end of the block, Zytha and her band have been victorious. They're removing these coffin-shaped boxes from the top of this beast and prying them open. 
Wonder what's in there. You don't have to wonder long as they get the lids off. A person crawls out of one and another from another. They leap excitedly from these. They give grateful embraces to their rescuers and they scamper off into the distance. Like you said, Clark, we've done good. Yeah. Can I just kind of call out to Zytha? Should we be expecting backup? Not before we can make ourselves scarce, I don't think. Thanks for your help. You had some business with Martin. I'll leave you to it. Is Martin here? Martin would have been one of the people sort of getting these coffins off of the top of the debtor's transport. Now that that's over with, Martin, we have some questions for you. How does he look? Was he in the combat? Hard to tell with all the war paint, but he's breathing heavily. As Clark goes to engage, I know this does absolutely nothing mechanically, but can I, like, use my herbalism kit and make a tea or something quickly to give to him? Probably not a tea, but maybe like a poultice or something to put on a sore spot, I would say. Roll me a medicine check. I just kind of sit down and slap this together out of my various kits and supplies. That's a 16. Oh, yeah. Ah, Ah, thank you. That'll certainly make the sword arm less sore in the morning. Aye. Yes, we should talk. You know, we're, we're not really trained to admit when we've failed. The Boros is supposed to be impregnable, unstoppable. And yet... And yet... (sighs) So there I was, wandering the hallways in the lower levels of the Chamber of the Guild Pact. It was a normal night, nothing too out of the ordinary, but then I heard this noise that sounded like it was coming from above me. Like a squelching noise, like boots in the mud after rain. I looked up and I couldn't see anything. And then there was a thud, and then I remember distinctly this slimy hand covered my mouth. I couldn't make a sound, and this foul-smelling gas went into my nose and my mouth, and that was the last thing I remember. Did it have a shape to it, this thing? It looked like a frog's hand, you know? So it was webbed? Yeah, webbed and with some bulbs on the end of the fingers. Unnatural-like. Did it have an odor about it? Like I said, that gas it dosed me with was pretty foul-smelling. You know, you literally just said unnatural, but can I make a nature check? <laughs> See if any of this sounds familiar. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Nature is definitely relevant. Arcana also relevant. That's only a 13. This is still probably not too exotic. It was probably some sort of Simic hybrid, you would guess. You see a sort of uneasy look come across my face. I don't say anything, though. If I had to guess, probably one of those bio-mutants. Simic. Martin, do you think this was guild-related, or...? Some sort of isolated incident. Well, most of those mutants have some sort of connection to the Simic. Either their members or people down on their luck enough to volunteer for that sort of work. Could have been a researcher. Or a deep sage of some variety. Probably no use with the conjecture, I suppose. There's thousands of them in the city, but... You know, they are scientific people. and They do take notes of all the weird things they do to everyone over there, so maybe with my testimony and if you gathered any other evidence, they might be able to narrow it down. Ah, that reminds me. So Clerk starts flipping through his notepad. (laughs) They said they didn't disturb any of the wards. Now how is that possible? How did it get in there? Maybe it's some other sort of mutation. Looking at Illipel, you elves have a sort of natural resistance to magic, don't you? It's a particular resistance, but sure. This is just a wild guess, but maybe it's another one of the mutations. Something to amplify that natural resistance to magic so that the wards couldn't detect them. All right. So we're looking for a frog elf? Martin sort of shrugs. All right. Clark writes frog elf with a question mark (laughs) in his notepad and puts it back in his back pocket. Excellent. I've seen Stranger. It's quite a trek, but I suppose it might be worth going to the 5th Precinct. Is that where the Simic... Ah, uh, yes, that's where Zone 7 is. Also shares a border with the back portion of Nivix, right? Nivix sort of straddles right. the 4th and the 5th. So you're not too far away, but you have been out here for a little while. It's not too late in the day time-wise, but it is winter and it's getting dark early. So you think maybe you have another hour or so of sunlight left. We should return to the guild office, see if they have anything to say about this Simic lead. You would have to go the entire length of Tin Street to get back to the first precinct. I see, so it's kind of in the opposite direction. Well, we haven't much light left, and 
It's not too far to our destination. I think it would behoove us to head there post-haste. I'm not sure the juice is worth the squeeze to take the detour all the way back to the Guild Pact, but we are fearlessly led by our manager of sorts here. I believe this decision should be yours to make. I agree that the decision be mine to make. <laughs> we can make it to Zone Out 7 tonight. Let's go. Martin, you said they never taught you how to handle failure, but I do believe that Horizon taught you courtesy, and we do appreciate your forwardness where it concerns these events. Martin looks at you. You can see his face is a little conflicted. Yeah, I guess. Things are changing all over. Looks to his strange band of misfits, the Irregulars. Maybe it's time I made a change as well. Good luck to you. I hope you find what you're looking for. All right, thanks. <laughs> and with that, you head sort of southwesterly towards Zonot 7. Make me some sort of navigation check. Alwyn, you could roll survival. Sure. Anyone could roll persuasion to ask <laughs> for directions. As soon as we get away from where all of these events happened and make our way back into more populated area, I put my hood back up. I am vehemently distracted by something which I may or may not bring up, but uh, whopping eight. I've got a dirty 20 on persuasion. Do I see anyone around? Yeah, you see. Clark, you see a human woman dressed somewhat similarly to Alwyn. She's standing at a stall. Mushroom soup. Get your mushroom soup here. Still hot and fresh. The perfect thing for a cold winter's eve. Mushroom soup. Uh, yeah, that looks really good. What's the fastest way to get to Precinct 5? Oh, you're almost there, my friend. I'll just keep following this underpass to the west, and you should see the university and the library up ahead in no time. Care for some mushroom soup? Uh, no thanks. I'm allergic to mushrooms. Ah, a great tragedy. I thought you were allergic to soup. Oh yeah, that too. I'll inspect the soup. I'm still super duper hurt, so if there's any sort of short rest we could take, that would be really great. I do also know that it's, like, almost dark, so... I guess that's not going to happen. And I have no spell slots, so maybe should we have thought of a plan that involves a long rest? And ma'am, where are the nearest lodgings? There isn't too much of the kind in this neighborhood, but if you'd like to go to the Hightower Hotel, it's right near the university. People visiting their children while they're studying tend to stay there. That should be right along the way. Prominent signage. You wouldn't miss it unless you were blind. Oh, not anymore. The High Tower Hotel. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. And best of luck with your mushroom soup. Perhaps after a nice rest, we would love to compliment it with some of this delicious uh, food that you have here. Why, Yulabel, that's a wonderful idea. I'll buy some. Five zibs for this soup. Sh- shitty little mushroom water. <laughs> Hey, man, that's the food of my people. I didn't say that in character. Don't get upset. <laughs> Alwyn would be quite familiar with this. Alwyn would also know that sometimes there's, you know, more than mushrooms in there, but you make do. I think I was going to look at it, but then I didn't, so... It's not like something that requires a con yeah. check or anything. It's just maybe the bones they made the broth with were of questionable origin. The bitterness, you see, it's, it's part of the... Oh, it's not great. There's something I need to tell you. I don't want to do it out here. We should find that place and rest. I was about to advocate the same. It's near our destination. We're quite tired, and looking up at the sky, I think we all know what comes next. What comes next? The darkness. I believe in a thing called love. No, I'm just A cold winter's night. Oh, that? All right. To the high tower, then. You make your way to high tower. You find the high tower hotel. A minotaur fellow stands behind the door. Uh, how are you? Looking for a place to stay? Yeah. Hey, uh, why do they call this place the High Tower? Why, indeed. You know, this is sort of a student area, right? It's sort of a tongue-in-cheek thing, you know, these academics in their high towers. Huh. A matter of pride for some, but, you know, maybe a point of derision for others. I'm not going to get into that debate with a customer. I was under the understanding that it was merely celebrating the fact that your universities lay home to many tall buildings and spires. Don't mind them. They speak snob. Chicken and egg problem, right? Ah, you are fair, sir. It is no matter. So, you're looking to stay the night? 
It's getting dark early these days. How much for a room? For each of you, a Xeno a night. All right. I think we can do that. Very well. Illithel takes out a Xeno. I'm comfortable on the floor. I don't need much. So, we lodge together, then. Sure, why not? I mean, okay. Illipel says, unhappy. Do you require your own room, Illipel? Not a matter of require, it's a matter of preference. And I do have the coin to support such a luxury, but I suppose... Well, I mean, if you're paying for our room, then, you know, two rooms it'll be. Well, this cheeky fellow is quite presumptuous. I have to agree with Clark here. Don't let us weigh you down. And how much for two rooms? Two Xenos, if you want two rooms. One for me, and I'm feeling quite charitable. One for my friends. I just kind of winked, Glork. <laughs> Thanks, bud. All right. He passes you a couple of keys. That'll come with breakfast. Check out times at noon. I'm Rivok. I'm the night manager. So if you have any, you know, questions, concerns, problems about the room, I'll see what I can do about it. You're on the second floor. All right. I nod. Follow Clark. Let's go upstairs. Wait a minute. Is there a tavern connected to this inn or no? Yeah, there's like a bar. Okay. Can I just like generally survey to see what kind of patrons are there? Yeah, there are a small smattering of people of different races and backgrounds. These look like somewhat older people, some Vidalcan, some elves, probably parents visiting their kids at school. I don't get the impression that we'll get too much valuable information. Now, I myself am not really one to surrender to the drink, but if either of you two feel value in such an endeavor, I will happily join you. Otherwise, we can retire to our rooms. You make it sound so appealing. You a fan of the drink, Clark? Only in good company. Ilpel, don't you run a sort of drinking establishment? Which is exactly why I don't drink. I can respect that. Let's have a drink. All right. You go over to the bar. There's a... Uh, there's a centaur standing nice. behind it. Might as well just be in there. And they look at you. Ah, what can I get for you? Three your strongest. Uh, my strongest what? Friend? Whatever you got. Very good. They take a bottle from behind the bar, uncork it, put three shots on the table, pour, pass them towards you. I pass one to, to Clark and Illipel. I'm going to smell it. Ah, uh, yes. That's a special bioengineered brandy. You can only really get it down the way. It's supposed to be stimulating. Stimulating. All right. Uh, it loses all the natural flavor. Uh, some people like this... Micro-brewing, I think they call it. As long as it's strong. Maybe microbe-brewing. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, shit. That's great. That's, wow. Sounds science-y to me. And Clark <laughs> drinks it. I reach into my pocket and I pull out a really decayed leaf, like a bay leaf or something, but it's really gnarly looking. I just dunk it in the shot glass. This won't be the first time I've run into Simic under foul circumstances. And I down my shot. Just like the most pungent, earthy, like if a brown lager tasted like mud. Totally. You enjoy that experience. I must say I'm a little disappointed that we didn't have a toast to commemorate what will hopefully be the first of many adventures that we go on together. Oh well, no matter. Illipel downs the drink. No amateur to drink. Illipel throws this shot back like it was nothing. Illipel, maybe you've sourced some of these Simic brews before. They are always interesting, to say the least. The shots are going to be 20 zibs apiece, says the bartender to you. Jesus! Still less than the two Xenos I put up for our rooms. I look at them and I put one Xeno down on the bar for the three of us. That'll get you another couple shots if you want them. I look towards Illipel. You were saying something about a toast? Very well. I'll throw down the last 20 zibs that we need, and let's do a proper toast. Roll my eyes. Okay, four, three more shots for you. I just stare at Illipel expectantly. This ought to be good. To good fun. And Illipel begins to, <laughs> to kick out. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're going to finish this job, and you're going to go back to your cushy lifestyle. We're never going to see each other again, right? Dang. I think the three of us each have our own comforts waiting for us at the end of this road. Yeah, but I'm not trying to lie about it. Well, my comforts may be, at the surface, cushy, as you described. But make no mistake, my new friend, the comforts that await me do have a razor-sharp edge to them. A seedy underbelly, which is constantly lingering. There are forces at work 
constantly trying to undermine me. So, while I do have much to look forward to at the end of this journey, I do have much to worry about. And in the meantime, I'm enjoying drinking this peculiar beverage with two interesting, potentially great friends. I'm sorry, were you still talking? <laughs> Holy shit. I just look at Clark with a side eye. I get the feeling Illipel doesn't have very many friends or allies in their business. My friends are numerous, my allies are few, but the lines between them are certainly blurred at any given moment. And with you two, I feel there is a much more distinguishable line, and for now I appreciate that. That being said, I completely understand your trepidations. Look, perhaps you'd warm up to me a little bit more if maybe you paid for the next round of drinks. Sorry, I don't buy drinks for underlings. <laughs> Holy shit! Savage. And Clark jumps down from his stool. And with this somewhat hostile rumination on friendship and the future, I can assume the three of you retire to a long rest. Before we go to bed, if it's Clark and I in the same room, bed's all yours, boss. And I sit down on the floor and kind of unpack all of my things and settle in. While I'm perhaps bandaging some wounds or preparing some more poultices, Illipel is all talk. But I have to admit I can relate to what's beneath it. Before this, before the Guild Pact, the greatest trust and bond I had in my entire life was broken, shattered. That must have been hard for you. What happened? I had a brother once. We were inseparable, orphans actually, and raised by the Golgari. That explains the smell. Lupel actually met him the day of the invasion. We were helping people take shelter in... My mother's stronghold, a fortress, Stonehaven. We housed a lot of people. Illipel and a few of their employees were among them. But a few days later, we were out on the first job, first scavenge, since all of that happened. And my brother, he found something. Something that should have stayed buried. But instead, he took it, and he brought it to the Simic. And he betrayed me, he betrayed our mother, and he betrayed the swarm in doing it. So you have a little bit of history with the Simic, then. Why do you think I bought us a round of drinks? Because you're such a nice guy? You're kind, Glork. I hope we don't have to deal with them for too long. And I would be perfectly happy to never see his face as long as I live or as long as I die. Well, then that's no way to talk about your brother. He's not my brother, Glork. Not anymore. Oof. Well, Illipel's right to trust a few people. At the end of the day... Trust is the only thing that matters between living and dying. And with that further rumination on trust and betrayal, you all receive a well-deserved long God. rest. You wake, and there's a metropolitan breakfast for you downstairs. Because I suppose there really aren't continents in this world. <laughs> it's one big continent. A Pangean breakfast. Yeah, there it is. You know, bagels and such. You can go from here wherever you'd like to go. I'm going to look at Illipel in the morning and say, How'd you sleep, princess? <laughs> you making a mockery of my perfume? No. Are you feeling extra glib with your nice bedded night's rest in a room that was paid for by one of your... What was the word? Underling? Underlings. <laughs> oh my god, there's so much passive aggression. I love it. I don't take any of that personally. I'll make Ron pay for it when this is all over. You heard him, Illipel. Don't take it personally. Ah, and with a snap of my finger, I have not taken it personally. Thank you. All right, so I think you guys are headed for Zonot 7. A little ways south, you can actually hear the falls of this great sinkhole a few blocks before you actually arrive there. These sinkholes are said to drop miles down where they feed into the underground oceans of Ravnica. As you get closer to the rushing waterworks that pour down the side of this ringed habitat, the sound of rushing water is nearly deafening, and there's a thin layer of ice that clings to the railings and spiraling pathways that lead down deeper into the facility where the labs and medical buildings might be found. Would I know that these drops lead into Undercity territory? Yes, they intersect with the Undercity. Sometimes they become, you know, flashpoints of conflict. I thought so. Looks a lot different from this point of view. As I stare down into this massive void. Would this be visible from the top of Nivix? Yeah, absolutely. I'm used to seeing it from above. 
We tended to avoid it from below. There's this big habitat before you. Clark, you would probably get your annual physical here. So you probably know where, like, the medical offices are. Nice. All right, I've been here before. Let's find someone to talk to who might have seen a uh, frog elf. I just kind of picture the camera panning back down to Clark's fucking little notepad that says frog elf frog question and That's a really mark. simple piece of fan art, too. Just like a, a doodle. You see some people walking around. Somebody roll me a persuasion check if you want to flag somebody down. Got it. Absolutely not me. 23. Illipel, you encounter a... I don't want to, like, stealth as and hide in the shadows, but I want to try and... Hang back? Keep a low profile under my cloak. Okay. You see an elven woman walking by you. She is wearing a dark green lab coat with blue spirally patterns accenting it. You get her attention, and she says, Yes, how can I help you? Noting a fellow elf, she would say this in elvish. Yeah, actually, that's how I wanted to kind of wave her down, is in elvish. Yes, we are looking for... Love that. Jesus. Their accent is a little different in elvish. We are looking for information on some particular semic researchers. This will be a little different and difficult for me to fully explain or qualify, but essentially, someone that you know might be interested in weaponry. Is there a division here that focuses on weaponization of specific materials, anything solar related, anything like that? I apologize. I've been a little too forward. I should have stated that I am here on behalf of the Guild Pact with some compatriots of mine. Yes, I can see that. Well, there are several labs working on weaponry, but nothing solar-powered? Though I guess, theoretically, you could, could redirect energy generated from a high-volume photosynthetic reaction Purely speculation. I also understand Elvish, and my eyes are just fucking glazing over at this. Right now, the most defense-oriented projects would be in the Hullclade Labs or in Vanifar's personal project. Is Vanifar a, a person? She is our prime speaker. How could you not know of her and her magnificent work in cross-species transmutation? So that's been her focus lately. Okay. They don't tell me much, you know, I'm, I'm just an underling in this party here, and I'm trying to sort it all out, but you've been really helpful. What was the name of that other the other place again that you said? The Hulklade Laboratory. The Hulklade Laboratory. Okay. Okay. Perfect. What was any of that? Well, I thank you very much. You've been a tremendous help, and I think we'll make our way for the Hulklade Laboratory. Looking over to Clark, hoping Clark will take out their little notepad and write that down. Was that Hulklade? All right. As soon as we're away from this person, I just look directly at Illipel. So the Guildmaster, then. I mean, cross-species transmutation. I think there's certainly thread there worth pulling. I question if it's the first thread we pull. I question if it's a thread we even bother with. One Guildmaster going after another's projects. We're connected to Rull. We're connected to the Guild Pact. What are we going to do if we go in there? Start asking these questions. And we don't like their answers. Did you expect this journey to be full of nothing but answers you like? We have to become comfortable with the idea that some things we unearth are less than pleasant, and some tidings we bring back to the pact are less than well received. It is the burden we all share now. It's actually a pretty good point. As you have this conversation, you can make your way to the local lab for the Hull Clade. You might roll history if you want to know more about them. Oof. Fourth shot. 23. That's a four for me. Illipel would know about the Hull Clade. Most of their research involves making things more survivable, adding extra protective layers. They will splice their subjects with the shells of turtles or the chitinous plates of beetles and other insects, and they tend to be mostly focused on that sort of experimentation. And there aren't really doors in this whole place there are doorways and in them there are these gelatinous membranes that hang in the doorway oh i hate this it's most peculiar that we'd be brought here that typically specialize in defenses odd of them to be a suspect in an investigation regarding weaponization but i suppose the old adage exists for a reason the best offense is a good defense but in this case a great defense is building disgusting doors to walk through Anyone care to volunteer? 
I go in first. You pass through this gelatinous green membrane. Some of the stuff that's tangled in Alwyn's hair does get caught in this membrane. Oh, come on now. It's gone and messed up all my weapons. You might think that this has something to do with sterilization. As you enter this office, that's situated in the side of this great sinkhole. There's a cool blue light emanating from these bulbous lanterns hanging from the ceiling. They almost look like the pods of plants, and they bathe this office in an eerie blue bioluminescent light. I wince from under my hood. And there's a Vidalkin woman sitting at the desk. Yes, good morning. How can I help you? I know this office has a particular fondness for weaponry and defenses. We are here on behalf of the Guild Pact, and would be most grateful to you if you could point us in the direction of any hybrids that happen to work here. We have many hybrids in our employ. May I ask, is there a reason that you're seeking our hybrids, or is there a single hybrid in particular you're looking to talk to? Sadly, as of yet, we haven't quite narrowed that down. I understand that that may make what we are asking for rather difficult. I suppose... Yes, it is illogical that you have come here first. You should proceed instead to the Biogenic Archive, up a layer from here. They should be able to help you more specifically narrow down the subject of your search. You know so little about my search, yet so confident about where we should go. That is most peculiar. That is not to say I'm not very grateful for your guidance, and will certainly take it under advisement. Just a strange, peculiar thing I've noticed. If you're seeking an individual, the Biogenic Archive would have information on individuals. If you find that they are one of the individuals in our employ, then you could speak to them. Without more information, I cannot simply summon up every hybrid that is working here or participating in experiments here for you to speak to. Not even at niv Mizzet's behest. So, uh, to the Biogenic thing. The Biogenic Archive, yes, that would be the logical course of action. This Biogenic Archive... What exactly is the purpose of this building? Patients and test subjects. And how is this information retrieved? More specifically, is this something we could feed a sample to and gives us back an answer? Nothing quite so simple, I'm afraid. Most of it is stored in, as I understand it, a cerebral jelly. Sounds tasty. All right, I... Ingesting cerebral jelly is illogical. <laughs> Side effects may include death. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, I've heard enough. You said it was up one layer... Yeah, Are there like the stairs or some kind of weird tube we have to go through? No, just simply take the ramp as you used to get here. Although we are experimenting on some tubes if you'd like to hop in one. I'll pass, thanks. I head for the ramp. So I guess I'll walk right back out that slimy door. Mm-hmm. You all pass again through the green gelatinous membrane. But grudgingly, while we're walking back up the ramp, I just kind of thorn whip and chill touch... All of the, like, spikes and growth and shit that the door fucking cleaned off my weapons. I hate to tell you this, but there's another gelatinous membrane at the door to the archive. Oh, fuck off. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Sort of standard procedure to keep a sterile environment. You walk into this room. The walls seem to have this glowing network of Venus vessels that spiderweb through them. There's a sleek glass desk and there's a vidalkin sitting behind it she marks your entry with some disinterest do you have an appointment with us i don't think we need an appointment we're with the guild pact ah all right what do you want we're looking for an individual a hybrid we got a uh, sample of slime here if that'll help to locate yeah it might but do you have a formal request for this i can't just go out giving personal medical information of our subjects yeah, here's a formal request for you. We're here from the Guild Pact, and we are looking for an individual. So good. Look, if the dragon himself walked in these doors right now, legally, nothing he could say, even as the Living Guild Pact, could make me divulge a person's personal medical information. They need a warrant. Do you want me to get Golival in here? Golival? Yeah, they're my manager. Can Golival help me? Maybe, if you're here from the Guild Pact... This sort of thing seems above my pay grade. 
A Gullival! From a room in the back, an elf comes striding out. They're wearing this long green lab coat with a large frilled collar behind their head that makes them sort of look like a frilled lizard. And they've also got a scaly looking cloak that augments that look. And as they extend a hand to greet you, you can notice they have some sort of proto webbing between their fingers. You must be Gullival. Yes. Come into my office. You're from the Guild Pact? That's right. Insight check. Mm Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Natural 14 for a total of dirty 20. They seem excited to see someone from the Guild Pact. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Please, come into my office. Smells like a side quest. (laughs) (laughs) Smells like the person. I thought you'd never ask. I go in. I want to scope out the entirety of this building that we're in right now as we kind of follow this person. Sure. Roll perception. Okay, that's a 14. It looks like a weird sciency hospital. Is there anybody else here other than the person at the desk and this person? There seem to be some other offices where there might be some other people like working at desks, but it doesn't seem like there's a ton of activity. Okay. And these just kind of look like offices and like lab type stuff. It's a hospital archive, basically. Okay. You follow them into their office. They sit down at a desk. There's only one chair. Sorry. Usually don't see too many people at the same time. Clork hops up on the chair. So. I stand behind Clork. So what is it the dragon wants to know? Very important piece of hardware went missing from the office of the guild pack a couple nights ago. I see. And our mutations are relevant to you? Well, we have reason to believe that the individual who has taken... This very important piece of hardware may have been a Simic hybrid, and we were hoping that you could help us find them. Mm, Indeed, that is troubling. As I'm sure my assistant informed you, I cannot simply pass along that information without proof that there is a clear and imminent danger to the lives of the citizens of Ravnica. Otherwise, a person's bodily autonomy is inviolable even to the guilt pact. Wow. So... Fresh off of a recent invasion, many of us dead, buried. We still feel the need for invaluable rights, as you say. I find it most peculiar that, at a time when the district is at its most vulnerable, we feel the need to stand on ceremony and shroud ourselves in red tape where it concerns the theft of weapons-grade artifacts. The inviolable rights of the citizens of Ravnica are the bedrock of our society. A person has a right to their body. So, however, mutual understandings and arrangements are also a key part of our little civilization that we have here. Wow, I hate this. I don't like it either, Andy. As agents of the Guild Pact, you might help resolve a territorial dispute as a neutral party, and then perhaps some relevant information to your pursuit finds itself out in the open where you might be able to peruse it. I said I smelled a side quest. I hate this. I, there's no way I want to help Simic with anything. I do appreciate your willingness to name a price so quickly. I find it makes negotiation much easier. If you wouldn't mind sharing a little more details, perhaps we could be of some assistance. There is a cavern where we are trying to do a good deal of research on floral mutations. Mm. But on the opposite end, it is occupied by a rot farmer. Now, we both began sowing our seeds in that chasm around the same time, but the resulting tangle that occurred between our two agricultural endeavors has made it so that neither has been able to proceed according to our intentions. So if you could convince this rot farmer to find somewhere else to farm their rot as a neutral ambassador, then I should be more than happy to do some digging, perhaps off the books. I think this arrangement is most agreeable. In fact, I think you and I speak quite a similar language. And while ambassadorship is not my formal trade, it is one that I am quite adept at despite having never been paid for it. We will take this task. I ask one thing in return. If I may, just a small sample for myself. I do have a particular enjoyment of fragrance, and such mutations may provide me with some new bouquet to enjoy. I suppose no one would notice a hyper-pungent violet go missing from the garden? Hyper-pungent violet. I love the sound of that. We would be glad to help you. We would? We're going to take part in the 
violating of inviolable rights and all we have to do in exchange is to evict an honest worker? None of that sounds okay to me. We have to say, I agree. <sighs> this deal simply will not do. Now listen, I've been working with the Is It League for my entire life. I'm not afraid of a little bit of paperwork. What does it take to get information on this guy the right way? There would need to be proof of a clear and immediate threat to the safety of the citizen. It wasn't us, Skid. What about a clear and immediate threat to your safety? I pull my mallet out of my glove. Ah, the moral compass seems to swing in any direction it pleases. I find this very interesting, you two, but I am at your behest, Cloak. Illipel will also slowly pull out their rapier. Yes! <laughs> now, now, now. We didn't resort to violence. I am bound by the law to uphold my obligations to my patients. Bound by the law to work out shady deals in the back room when people are looking for information? A profitable situation presented itself. I'm not a fool. But if you are not willing to deal, then I'm afraid I cannot help you. What do you think would happen if a certain representative of the guild pack were to go back to the guild pact and tell him that someone working for Simic is making these sort of deals. Roll intimidation. Can he get advantage with me standing behind him, holding my mace intimidatingly? You can help. 22. Hell yeah. Do appear to have hypothetically talked myself into a hypothetical problem. <laughs> you see noxious spores start to infect the clean air around my weapon. Nonetheless... Starting a ruckus in this laboratory will not end well for you. And you've given me less incentive to allow you to simply go about your business. Please, can't we come to some mutual understanding? I'm not asking you to violently evict this person. Just find them another place to do their work. It's helpful to all parties involved, really. I know I already rolled outside, but can I re-roll my insight check? The vibe is definitely different, I would say. That's a 24. Yeah. Gullival is in a tough spot. You can tell that they're pretty anxious. They're not afraid to fight, but they feel like fighting would create more problems. They do think that you can come to some sort of mutual understanding. All right. I'm going to turn to Alwyn and straight up ask, what do you think? You Simic think you're better than everyone else, but you're no different. Power and territory... All in the name of research. Our research improves lives. We are able to create new treatments for uh, the many diseases that afflict the people of the city. Please, I didn't mean to offend you, and I have nothing against your fellow rot farmer. It's simply that with this sort of arrangement, neither of us can properly do the important work that we need to do. So if you could just help us resolve this dispute. Where are they? There is a tunnel I can point you to it that should lead to the cavern. All right. We'll look into it. It's very much appreciated. Glad that you decided to be sensible. Clark doesn't say anything to that. Neither do I. And as I stow my mallet, I kind of swing it back and a puff of spores spill into the air and I put it back under my cloak. They put a hand over their mouth. I walk out of the room. As does Illipel, giving a curt nod. As they leave. You take a short walk through an undercity access tunnel, and after a little ways, you come to an impressive garden filled with rows of strange mutant plants growing under bulbs of luminescent goo. There are flowers and produce of larger than average size. However, beyond these few orderly rows, there's a large tangle of impossibly large ferns, Hell yeah. huge clumps of moss. Oh, yeah. Algae and toadstools some ten feet high <sighs> that scrape the cavern ceiling. And as Golival sort of leads you to the entrance here, they will say, The rot farmer is on the other side of this cavern, and that is what is creating this great unruly tangle. I kind of want to fight him here. <laughs> Golival, this hyperfragrant violet, what studies are being conducted with this? different mana mutations to accentuate its already potent properties. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go looking for this rot farmer. Cool, you head into the tangle. Do the rest of you follow? Does it look like this guy is just going to wait here? They're going to go back to their office. Man, I really want to get him. God. <laughs> we don't know what you're thinking. 
I know that. All right. After they turn around, I just spit on the ground and then follow Clark. I'll lead through here since since this is definitely turning back into my home terrain. Go ahead and make me a survival check to get through this mass of plants and fungi. That is a 19 plus 6, 25. Yeah, easily you're able to lead the group through this writhing tangle. As we do, I just kind of say... They work so hard to work against the natural order. All their medicines, all their surgeries. What does it get them in the end? All things are meant to die, just as all things are meant to live. While I don't share such a fondness for death like my guildmates, I also admittedly realize that the obsession of life to Seneca is an unhealthy one. As you say this, could everyone roll me a perception check? Great. Eleven. Five. Seven. As you're moving through this tangle, you can see some glowing, simic, luminescent bulbs ahead. They are not glowing their usual eerie blue or green, but something has made them into a sickly yellow. One of them seems to be rotten, and its contents are oozing out onto the floor. And upon closer inspection, you think you see this ooze moving towards you. Everyone can roll initiative. Awesome. Love oozes. Okay. 21. 7. Nat 1 for a total of 3. Illipel, you see this ooze moving towards you. What do you do? It's only one ooze? You only see one. Okay. That's DM speak for there are more oozes. Cool. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it on faith that there are more oozes on the way. I have a feeling there's more behind this than just this creature. And I will go ahead and cast Fairy Fire on it, and everything in a 20-foot radius around it. Has to make a dex save. Oh yeah, oozes, they have great dex. Well known for their dex. One roll the 16, and with a minus 2 mod, that's a 14, and a 10 for the other one. So there are two. So you see one ooze illuminated in Fairy Fire, and then another one that sort of missed your notice is now outlined by these motes of light and they did not like that as one lurches towards you Illipel and assuming a 23 hits <laughs> yeah it is wow the fair assumption what are these oozes pretty good ooze <laughs> <laughs> okay so you take 8 points of bludgeoning damage you shitting me and then another 2 acid damage this is the fucking final fight of the campaign <laughs> absolutely Glubo and Globo are the uh, are the final bosses. <laughs> there, there, there it is. Yeah. The other ooze will lurch towards Alwyn. Wow, these fucking oozes. God. Does a 14 hit you? 14 is my AC. 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Shit almighty. Christ. And another one acid damage. Oh my god. More than half my health. Clark, you're up. What color is this ooze? Yellow. Well, and well, and it's a al- and it's illuminated in whatever light you want it to be because it's got fairy fire on it. Is there anything I can roll? Anyone can roll nature or arcana to know more. I can roll arcana. Got an eighteen nature. Seven. Alwyn, you would know this is an ochre jelly. They are oozes that sometimes form in these sorts of places. They are immune to a lot of stuff. Possibly the most relevant that you would know is they cannot be harmed by lightning. Watch out. They're immune to lightning. I was afraid of that. All right. I'm going to blast it with a chaos bolt. I yell in character for some reason. <laughs> this will be an advantage. Hell yeah. <laughs> with advantage? They're fairy fired. Oh, they're fairy fired. It's two nines. It's a four, 14 to hit. That does manage to beat their eight AC. Yeah, I think even the nine on the die would beat their... <laughs> Indeed it would. Watch it be goddamn lightning damage. Just wait. Yeah, I know. Double lightning. Here we go. Here it goes. So, Clork starts waving around his wrench. <laughs> and you hear the warbling sound that I'll put in in post. It's a cool synthesizer effects. And I'm going to hurl a cold and force. I think force is a safe bet. Oh, yeah. Force is usually a safe bet. Yeah. All right. The one closer to me takes 12 points of force damage. Very nice. You slam into it with this chaos bolt. Alwyn, you're up as these oozes attack. Does the one that he just hurt look, like, severely deteriorated or not really? Not really. I mean, it's an ooze. It's hard to tell. I am going to 
be sad that my symbiotic entity is a whole ass action and instead of doing that I am going to shillelagh my mallet and attack very good advantage Oh, fairy fire, thank god. So, a ten will still hit? Yes, it's armor class is eight. It's a roll of fucking three and a four? (laughs) A nine would have hit, too. Cool. Okay, well, thank god. That's twelve points of magical blood damage. All right, a good hit, and one of these oozes does seem to be perhaps more puddle than ooze at this point. We go back to the top of the order. Illipel. I will attack the weak one. All right. 22 hits. Yes. Thanks for checking the stat block just to make sure. Eight piercing damage. This one looks pretty hurt. It is going to attack one of you two randomly. Goes for Illipel. Great, cool. Uh, 22 hits you, Illipel? Jesus Christ. It's a grazing blow, but it hits. (laughs) You take another eight bludgeoning damage. Perfect. So I'm at zero. See y'all later. Illipel falls unconscious. The other one will attack the conscious target. A 13 doesn't hit you, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay. At the start of its turn, I'm gonna Halo Spores. Uh, It makes a con save. Does a 12 pass? No, and it takes four necrotic damage. Clark, you're up. I don't know if I want to burn another chaos. I'm gonna do it. That worked pretty well. I'm gonna do it again. All right. I'm gonna go for the one that is more hurt. Very good. It's a crit fail. Oh, no. Your chaos bolt flies off into the tangle, having no effect. Alwyn, you're up. Seeing Illipel go down. No, too soon. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Illipel. Okay. And Illipel, you heal for eight. And I'm going to stand my ground and cast Shillelagh on my core staff. Very good. Illipel, you regain consciousness just as your turn arrives. I'm going to whack the weaker one. Oh, good, this will hit. Yeah, 12 hits, right? Yes, that hits. Five piercing damage. Okay, clinging to ooze-like life. Illipel, do you stand up? Yeah. Okay, good. Illipel, does a 13 hit you? No. Okay, very good. This ooze forms a pseudopod but cannot strike you. Alwyn, an eight will not hit you. Both of these oozes miss. We're at Clark. (sighs) Ah. That last one should have hit. Should have been at least a 90% chance of success. I'm gonna do it again. All right. This one's a 16 to hit. Yeah, that hits. There we go. All right. Now let's see what kind of chaos bolt this one's gonna be. All right. My options are fire and lightning. I'm gonna have to go with fire. All right. So they're gonna take 12 points of fire damage. Would you like to add some flourish as you incinerate this ooze? Sure. So I twirl around my wrench, making a warbling sound, and as I point it at this ooze, a blast of fire emerges from the end and just blasts this ooze into a splash of ooze. (laughs) The burning puddle of goop on the ground is all that remains of this ooze. Alwyn, it is your turn. All right. I'm going to swing twice. Very good. Can I flank with Illipel before I do these? Yeah, you could. Okay. First one's going to hit 12 on the dice. Second one is, in fact, a nat 20. Very good. Okay, so first one is nine bludgeoning damage. Okay, a very palpable hit. And the crit is 11 bludgeoning damage. Okay, you get a good crack in, and it goes back to Illipel. And the same flank applies to my attack, right? Correct. 15 hits. Yes, indeed it does. And that will be 9 piercing damage. Uh, This one also looking pretty hurt. It's going to flail its gelatinous membrane towards... Alwyn hit it the hardest. Does 16 hit you? 16 hits. Nine points of bludgeoning damage and five acid damage. I'm down. Now it's Clark's turn. How's this thing looking? Like two thirds of the way dead. Okay. I'm going to take out my light crossbow and I'm going to shoot it. Very good. 14 to hit. Very much a hit. And eight piercing damage. Excellent. One more hit like that will probably dispatch it. Alwyn, make me a death save, please. You got it. That's a 13. One pass. Illipel. Back to you. Hmm. Seems I owe you a favor. 
and I will cast Healing Word on Alwyn. Very good. And that will be... Yeah, it's nine. Holy shit. That was my bonus action. I will go ahead and just bop this little thing. Cool. 17 hits. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and see the dammies. Five piercing damage. Not quite sufficient to put this thing out of commission entirely. I didn't think it would be. And for that, it shall retort. Are you kidding me? It crit, didn't it? No! A 17 on the dice! Ah! Illipel, you take low roll here. Seven points of bludgeoning damage? All right. And oh. one point of acid damage. And now we're down. Okay. Oh, no! Clark, you're up. Is Alwyn still up? Yeah, I'm up. Okay. I'll get Illipel. I'm going to fire off another crossbow bolt. Very good. Seven. I'm sorry, it's armor class is eight. <laughs> Alwyn, would you like to end this farce? <sighs> I mean, I don't even... Yeah, I guess. Here we go. Here's two swings. There's an 18 on the first and a 12 on the second. Okay, it has three hit points left. Please add some flourish to the final blow of this combat. This is the Undercity I know. And I just fucking smash it apart. And as soon as that happens, I just, without missing a beat, I cure wounds, Illipel. Very good. For max, 12. Seems we're beginning to owe each other quite a number of favors. It's like pick them up off the ground. Thank you, friend. Yeah, you managed to clean up these oozes, and Alwyn, give me one last survival check to make it to the other edge of this mess. Sure. 16. Very good. You are able to emerge from this writhing tangle, and you see on the opposite side of this cavern a different sort of garden, this one with numerous varieties of fungus sprouting from long beds of fresh fertilizer. You see wandering through these beds, there's a woman in a humble green wrap dress with small colonies of lichen sprouting from the skirt and collar. She wears a pair of glasses beneath the long snake-like tendrils that grow from her head. She looks at you. Oh, I wasn't expecting visitors. Goodness, you look terrible. Alwyn, are you wearing your hood? My hood would probably be up, yes. I don't recognize this person, do I? Roll me, like, an intelligence check. Sure. That's a flat five. Not immediately you wouldn't recognize this person. Although, as she gets closer, she will at some point be able to see some of the details about your appearance, Alwyn. You're Rena's kid, aren't you? I put my hood down. Hi, <sighs> Alwyn. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Ah, uh, yes, you wouldn't remember me. Svetlana. Lana is fine. Come on, let's have a cup of tea. And that's a place where we can wrap things for tonight. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. With music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.